by any uh, stretch. So this is, this is coming out of the San Francisco media, which is liberal. An army of anarchists in black clothing and masks routed a small group of right-wing demonstrators who had gathered in Berkeley Park Sunday to rail against the city's famed progressive politics, driving them out, sometimes violently, while overwhelming a huge contingent of police officers. Okay, so that's what happened. Hundreds of officers tried to maintain calm in and around Martin Luther King Jr. Civic Center Park, no to Marxism in Berkeley rally, putting up barricades, searching bags, and confiscating sticks, masks, pepper spray, and even water bottles. The goal is to head off the type of clashes that sprang from similar rallies in the city earlier this year. So the cops are there trying to defuse. But once again, counter demonstrators, this is the anarchists, um, frustrated efforts by police who numbered about 400, 400 cops. As the crowd swelled to several times that size, the officers stepped aside and allowed hundreds of people angered by the demonstration to climb over barriers into the park, and there the violence ensued. Okay, so by the time the confrontations wound down, police had arrested 13 people, including one for assault with a deadly weapon, and six people were reporting uh, to hospitals with non-threatening injuries, non-life-threatening injuries, all right? Okay, so it's the usual. <clears throat> you uh, want to demonstrate on the conservative side, the Antifa people come out, the anarchists come out. So I, I was uh, cruising around on the Internet, and when I go on the Internet, I don't do it for fun. I do it for work. So I go to the Hill, and I write a column for the Hill. And I see uh, a, an interesting column by Ned Ryan, who is the uh, founder of American Majority. That's a training institute for conservatives and Republicans who want to run for office. Mr. Ryan also wrote speeches for President Bush the Younger. So the column basically says that the Antifa movement is far more dangerous to the country than the KKK and the neo-Nazi white supremacist movement. So let's bring in uh, Mr. Ryan now. <clears throat> you say in your column that the Southern Poverty Law Center um, cites about 6,000 members of the KKK nationwide, correct? That's right. That's correct. Okay. That's not many, obviously. It's just a minuscule amount. You say many, many more, perhaps hundreds of thousands, are in the Antifa movement. How do you arrive at that conclusion? So there, there are a couple things that I came to to come to that conclusion, Bill. And again, it, it's great to be with you. Um, by looking through uh, not only newspaper reports and reports of the protests in Seattle, the, the reports of the protests in Boston and Berkeley, all these other places, plus going online to Reddit, been able to kind of put together a little bit, again, the, the Antifa, the Antifa, however you want to pronounce it, they want to remain anonymous. They want to be in the shadows. They want to be murky as to how many there actually are, who's funding them. Bill, I suspect that really a lot of the Antifa movement came out of the Occupy movement, which was funded by George Soros. So if you were to ask me, Ned, who do you think is funding the Antifa movement? You know, my short list would be George Soros. Uh, yeah, and, and, and other people in that, in that world. It's, there's a complicated... Right. Um, it's like a corporation now of Soros and, and other people, the Ford Foundation, others who, who um, right. put money into groups like Color of Change but, and these radical groups, and they're all loosely tied. But would you say there are hundreds, people, of, hundreds of thousands of anarchists out there? I'm, I'm talking I, of violent people, the people who want I, I to really it, hurt. I, that's right. I, I put the figure at about 200,000, and again, as a, based off my best estimates, based off reports, and I actually think, Bill, that's a conservative figure. Okay. Um, so when I say 200,000, I think it's conservative. But I don't know if there's that many violent, I don't know if that many violent, but there, there's certainly, I would say, 200,000 hardcore believers. Whether they all want to go that's out right. and commit crimes, I'm not sure. But there's enough of them, uh, are they? there's enough of them right. to cause every city in the country concern when a conservative display takes place. There's no doubt about that, that these people can show that, up right. in numbers and with weapons and cause trouble. So here's my next question. Why has this been underplayed? Because, uh, you know, people are now starting to hear about this Antifa movement, anti-fascist movement, starting to hear about it. But, it. but the hysteria that surrounded the white supremacists dwarfed right. anything. Anything right. that the Antifa movement did. Well, first of all, I've got to explain to people who these guys are. And they're not shy about it, Bill. When you start doing a little poking around online, they are not shy. They are anarchists. They are Marxists. 
they are anti-capitalist, they are anti-government, and they actually consider violence and destruction of private property legitimate means of having, you know, political dialogue, if you want to call it that, because they believe, you know, physical property is a physical incarnation of the evil capitalist system. The thing that's interesting and the thing that's concerning, but, but let me give people a little perspective, too. So, again, I, I put a good estimate about 200,000. Again, are they all violent? I would say actually probably most of them are, but let's say they're not all, but a couple hundred thousand. They're, they say that they're anti-fascist, that they're out there to defeat and fight the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists, and the KKK. So, Bill, I did a little poking around. One of the most active neo-Nazi groups in America today is Vanguard America. They claim 200 members in 20 states nationwide. The KKK is about 6,000. And to give people a little perspective on that, the KKK's height of membership was in the mid-1920s. There's about 6 million official KKK members in a nation of 106 million. Today, we're nearly 330 million people in the United States, and we have 6,000 KKK members. And the thing that I've now started to realize, and call me slow on the uptake, Bill, but thanks to Russ Feingold, a former U.S. Senator, Democrat, and Howard Dean, obviously the former head of the Democrat National Committee, I finally started to understand what they're going after here. The Antifa and its allies in the mainstream media and the Democrat Party, you know what they're trying to do, Bill? They're trying to dehumanize, delegitimize, and uh, to dehumanize anyone who has political views that they disagree with. And they're taking this line of reasoning that anyone that agrees with the left's ultimate political agenda is doing so out of hatred and bigotry. Therefore, right. you're Nazis and racists. Therefore, violence is an acceptable answer. And so... Antifa is the most violent, but I've begun to see in the last week, I know where they're headed with this. This is an attempt to delegitimize anybody that they disagree with. Well, I think it's even more than that, but I want to I, I be, be careful that I don't think that Dean or Feingold is uh, espousing violence, all right? I, I don't think those people, it's okay with them uh, to be violent. But I think you're on to something, Mr. Ryan, in the sense that what this movement is doing is it's basically threatening the president, anybody who voted for the president, anybody the who's That's philosophically right. against communism, socialism, income redistribution, open borders, uh, any of that. All right. So th it, they're threatening them. It's the Antifa movement. Now, they do it in a number of ways. Direct violence is a threat, obviously. Internet sliming and smearing, which is legion, all right, uh, trotting right. out people who have been paid to uh, accuse people of stuff they didn't do. Uh, we're going to be exposing that in the upcoming weeks. Um, so it's, it's a loosely coordinated, we're going to create an environment where conservative people, traditional people, non-liberal people are afraid, afraid to stand up for their exactly. belief system because they're going to be hurt. We're going to hurt them. Now, my, I go back to my original question. This is not being exposed on any of the network newscasts or the morning newscasts or even on cable TV to any extent. That's right. Why not? Well, it's, it's because the, the mainstream media, again, is, is seeking to normalize this behavior. But if you look at it, Bill, and the fact that it's, it is based off equal hatred of Trump, and they view... Antifa as legitimate because the media also hates Trump. Therefore, Antifa, who also hates Trump, must be, you know, should be accepted. Again, it's a very dangerous line of reasoning because these guys, I, Bill, I cannot say this enough about Antifa, the, uh, Antifa, however you want to pronounce it. These guys don't really believe in freedom of speech. They don't no, believe I know in that. freedom it's of speech. It's a fascist organ. It's totalitarian. No, absolutely. It, it but they're this, following, this, the, this they're following the models that have been used in the Soviet Union when they overthrew the Tsar. Uh, they're following the models that Hitler used in, in Germany when he overthrew the Democratic. Mussolini did the same thing in Italy. Uh, Mao right. Zedong did the same thing in China. You basically terrorize your opposition and don't have a media exactly. and, ha and, and, ref and uh, this, forbid this is, the media to report right. it or coerce the media not to report it. But this is what ties into one of my real problems with the mainstream media today. 
They're not journalists interested in reporting facts. These no. facts are everywhere about Antifa. Right. They are opinionists who are interested in uh, manipulating the news to fit their worldview and agenda. And right now, the agenda and the worldview of the mainstream media is to defeat but it's even worse defeat than those that. that they disagree with. It's even worse than that. What the mainstream media, the national media has done is it's given voice to these people who come on, and one of them is named Anna Navarro on CNN, who every yes. time you disagree with Ms. Navarro, you're a racist. Every okay. time you say okay. anything that she doesn't like, you're a bigot, you're a hater. Okay, so the networks give these people who five years ago couldn't have gotten a platform because they themselves are haters. They hate. All right. right. They've given them yes. a platform. And then there's the anchor of the show not challenging anything. Oh, yeah, they're all bigots. They're all Nazis. They're all white supremacists. I mean, and you sit there and you go, well, when is this moderator going to challenge anything? And it never happens. So you're right. The product, it the, lines there's a the simpatico world. between the Antifa movement and many in the mainstream media. Last word. But the, but the, the thing that I want to point out to your listeners is it doesn't even have to be a coordinated, systematic attempt to have the same message. It's because they come from the same worldview. They don't believe in free enterprise. They don't truly believe in freedom of speech and thought. And so you see, again, Antifa advocating violence and destruction of private property, but the mainstream media also saying in a different way, by different means, we don't want to have freedom of expression. We don't want to have freedom of thought. We don't want to see these other ideas that I believe obviously are winning ideas to actually give, to, to have voice. And All so right. you look at one end of the spectrum, violence, the other one, just a manipulation of the news, ultimately going towards the same goal. All right, Mr. Ryan, we appreciate it. If you want to read uh, Ned's column, Ned Ryan, go to thehill.com and uh, punch it on up. Got two more stories to tell you about. Chicago, I promise updates on Chicago. Um, this weekend, seven dead, 25 wounded, shootings across the Windy City. So far this year, 2,500 Chicagoans shot um, that's 353 fewer than last year. Last year, more at this time. Now, um, the reason I'm covering this story is to show you that certain type of government, and we all know how Chicago's run. Rahm Emanuel is the mayor. Uh, the city council is all Democrat. The uh, structure of the city is very left. Uh, the, they have a Republican governor, Illinois, who just sits this out. He basically sits it out, didn't do anything. So when you have a government that is that permissive and that uninterested in protecting its own people, remember, it's 2,500 people shot, and this includes uh, a 16-year-old boy this weekend. Most of these are innocent people. These aren't gangsters. These are people, you know, caught in, caught up in a crossfire, or these guys just, you know, they get the wrong person, or, you know, I mean, it's unbelievable. Maybe I shouldn't say most of them. Many of them are innocent people. But where's the protection? You know, uh, Rahm Emanuel, you're the man. Where's the protection? You know, this has been going on for what? Seven years? Eight years? Okay. And finally, uh, this is an extraordinary thing that happened. Jim Brown's a former NFL running back.